In this video, let's go through a method of grading a parking lot or anything that you want using feature lines and some other tricks to allow it to be interactive and save you time from hand calculating individual elevations. Quick tour of what we have here in this drawing is I have a polyline that represents the edge of pavement for a proposed parking lot and its associated aisle. And what we're wanting to do is we want to grade this with an elevation of 100 right in the middle going downhill south at a one degree or one percent and to the left and to the right with a cross slope of two percent. And let me show you how to do that in a way that will allow us to manipulate and make the inevitable design changes you have and make it a little easier. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to draw me a line that's down the middle of this parking lot running from north to south. And I want it to extend beyond the end of my parking lot. Then I'm going to extend the other end to do the same thing. Now that I have that, I'm going to convert this to a feature. So I'm going to go to my home feature line, feature lines for objects, and select that line that I drew. I'm going to put it on a temporary site. Any site that is not your primary design site. If you don't have one, you would make one, but I call mine temp. You will assign it a style. I am going to erase the entity, but I am not going to assign elevations at this time. And I'm going to hit OK. Now that I have that feature line, this was a two point line. So my feature line has two points on it. If I select and go to my elevation editor, I can see that. If I am choose each one of these in the elevation editor, you'll see that the PI is highlighted on the screen. So I can know that go up station on this line is going south. I always like to check this that way I know which direction is what one to the computer. Now that I have that, I, we said we want an elevation of 100 to be right here at this midpoint and where it hits the uh, edge of pavement. So I'm going to insert an elevation point at that intersection. And I am using an elevation point instead of a PI because this does not a change in orientation of the feature line. If you don't have a change in orientation and you're only wanting to control slope or elevation, it is recommended that you use elevation points. PIs are for hard breaks in directionality of the line. Now that I've got that elevation point, now I've got one point out of three that actually has an elevation that I want. I'm going to open my elevation editor. I can see here's our elevation point represented by this circle and at 100, and, but the others are at zero. Now we said we wanted a 1% longitudinal grade, and I can control that right here on my grade back and grade, hit, grade ahead. Now, grade back going towards station zero would be a positive 1%, and my grade ahead would be a negative 1%. You can see it automatically calculated those elevations. Now that I have that, I'm going to step offset this to the left and to the right to help represent that cross slope that we talked about. So I will select it. I'm going to step to offset. And since I said I want 2%, and depending on the width of what you're grading, uh, you would change this. But mine, I know I can do an offset of 100, and it makes my math easy. So I'm going to do 100 to this side. And since I said 2% at 100 feet is minus 2 feet. And I'm going to repeat that to do it to the other side. Now that I've got these three points, I'm going to utilize them to make me a surface. So I'm going to select them, right click and add break line to surface. And I'm going to put them on a new surface that's called temporary. This is a temporary design surface. And hit OK and OK. And here's my blank slate planar surface design plane that I'm going to use to help me calculate all these elevations around my parking lot. <laughs> now that I have that made, let's get to work on our actual design. So I'm going to select this edge of pavement and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to move this to a feature line. This time, since this is a design object, I'm going to put it in my design site. Choose the uh, style that you want to use. I'm going to erase the existing uh, entities. But in this case, I do want to assign elevations. And I'm going to hit OK. 
I will open the Assign Elevations dialog box. And since we have this temp surface, I'm going to say get my elevations from that surface that we designed, insert intermediate gray breaks, which is where it crosses triangles, and I want it to sit directly on that surface. So I want to check the relative elevation to surface and hit zero. And when I hit OK, if I open up another view here so we can see it three dimensionally, shift and roll up here, and I'll switch this to shades of gray maybe. We can see that it moved that up and draped it directly onto that surface. I'm going to repeat the step for the uh, island real fast with the 3D window open. So I'm going to feature, feature line for objects. Select this island. Site grading, first order erase, assign elevations from surface temp, insert and relative. This relative is important. We'll go over why in just a moment and hit OK. And you can see it moved it up. Now I can use these two objects to create my surface that I want, my design surface. So I'll select both of these, right click and add to a new surface that I will call design. And let's change this to a style so we can see it a little better. So let's do one five. And now you can see our design surface. And it's sitting directly on that right there. So if I select this and maybe turn off its display real fast, you can see our surface. I've got these triangles where I've um, <clears throat> not set a boundary, but you can see it calculated it all within that area and exactly on top of that other surface that we had a moment ago. So if I come back and turn on our temp, It's back on there and they are the same and laying directly on top of each other. Now, this feature line, if I select it and I go to my elevation editor, you will see that it is set to relative to surface and a relative offset of zero. It did that automatically in the way that we imported it. So, if I change my temp, it will change the surface. So, let's say that we got during design and we said 2% cross is too much. So, I'm going to select that feature. I'm going to come in here to my elevation editor and I'm going to say incrementally raise it by one foot and hit OK and rebuild, rebuild. And you can see it automatically updated that. So it's good and interactive for our base and it's keeping us from having to calculate these elevations at these corners and along these radii. You may want to say that, okay, I've got this in here. Why don't I just use the elevation editor and what you showed me before with controlling these slopes? And you can do that only for the areas that are parallel to your uh, design, longitudinal and cross, or perpendicular to your cross slopes, to the slopes you're designing. Anything that is not, like these radii, if I was to set 1% along this, that would mean that this longitudinal slope in here is not 1. So it depends on how you're wanting to control it. That's a quick run on how to use feature lines to get this and keep them relative to each other and keeps it so that you can make some pretty quick changes without having to calculate it. We will, con we will expand on this in one of our next videos and start utilizing this feature line to make this even more complicated. If you like this content, please click like. Feel free to subscribe.